Today we're going through the loadouts of every single operator in Rainbow Six Siege so that you can know what the best attachments are to be good at the game. Now, this is, let's just start off by saying this is going to be my personal preference, okay? There's no such thing as, like, the best, like, like, by the numbers, essentially. It's all personal preference. Essentially, it comes down to the fact that we all kind of aim in a different way, just slightly different mechanics, you know? Yeah, you pull down on your mouse, whatever. But I am also on PC, so if you're on console, this is definitely going to be something that you got to play around with. Uh, you can use this as a great starting example, and I'll also be giving out tips for the loadout, why you should be p specifically picking certain weapons, and certain utility that way um you can just maximize your chances of being better getting kills and winning games so that you can rank up right that's all what we're trying to do here unless i'm missing something you know maybe maybe your guys aren't trying to rank up and you're just trying to get better at specific things and if that's the case then let me know let me know how i can help you because that's what i'm here for boys this is my job my job is to just help you guys get better at the game that's probably the greatest job i could ask for so <laughs> let's get into it we're starting out with smoke, and smoke, I mean, you got to be running that shotgun. Shotgun, close range, complements the smoke grenades very nicely, and for pretty much all shotguns, I'm running iron sights and laser sight, and we're going to, this is going to be some general notes off the start, because there is going to be a lot of things that will be similar across all the loadouts. Laser sight, run it on every single gun. It increases your aim down sight speed, and that's something that's just instantly a bonus. It's 15% increase, so put it on every weapon. Uh, you're going to see it that I have it on literally every gun, unless there's operators that I haven't played yet this season, which I haven't equipped it on yet, and if that's the case, then those operators are probably kind of ass, and you probably shouldn't play those operators, but regardless, let's keep going. Iron sights, shotguns, you don't need um you don't need to put the one time sight on because you don't really need to aim very precisely with the shotguns because it is a spread uh i run iron sights on pretty much all of them and it also increases the aim down sight time and because the laser sight doesn't uh reduce the spread anymore it's important to be aiming down your sights with a shotgun so that the spread is tighter so that more of the pellets hit so that you can do more damage and get the kill at a longer range so that's like your your go-to shotgun loadout we won't go too in in depth on that on the other operators uh but let's move on to the smg 11 just, I mean, it's fully auto over the pistol. You want to be running this if you're not, you're crazy. I run the muzzle brake, but the flash hider is also good. I kind of switch between the two of them. Um, these are kind of my two, probably my two top picks for most guns is the flash hider and the muzzle brake. When in doubt, flash hider. Flash hider is always the move when in doubt. And I realize my face cam is covering up the screen. So let's move that real quick. I've been demoted to the bottom corner of the video now. So that's, it's kind of a low blow. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Anyway, as I was saying, Flash Hider is pretty much the go-to. If you're worried about what barrel to run, Flash Hider is usually the play. But feel them out. Test them out. Don't be scared to try things. There is the shooting range where you can go and test things out, and that's that's a nice place to be. Uh, in terms of grips, I originally thought hor horizontal grip was going to be really, really strong this season. I have completely changed my mind. I run vertical grip on literally everything. Less recoil means easier to hit headshots, easier to get kills, less whiffs. Uh, angle grip is nice for reloading, but most of the time you should be reloading in cover anyway, so I literally don't run angle grip on anything. And horizontal grip, there's only really rare times I use it, like on DMRs where I'm already like controlling the recoil pretty nicely and don't really need to worry about running the vertical grip. Uh, outside of that, vertical grip on everything is pretty much the go-to. Hollow B is my favorite site just because it has a little smaller dot than the hollow A. I know a lot of people still really like the hollow A. I'm pretty much hollow all around. I do have reflex B on some guns, but we'll check that out later. And then for smoke, I run barbed wire uh, because I find that I can hear audio off the barbed wire. If someone walks through the barbed wire, I'm going to hear that. If you can't hear that, I would recommend running beat proximity mines because you want that information of where they're at. I also like the barbed wire because it allows me to shoot them with the shotgun, like swing off the sound and shotgun them, uh, and they're they're not moving very fast through the barbed wire, so that's a nice way to get kills too. And then in combination with those smoke grenades, I find it's really, really solid. Moving on to mute. Same thing with the shotgun here, iron sight, laser sight, um, and then SMG, uh, same loadout. I run the reflex B on this, apparently. Another sight that I like for the SMG, and then I have the muzzle brake again, uh, but again, flip between the muzzle brake and flash hider on this one. Uh, and then C4, if you're running bulletproof, like C4s are the best secondary utility in the game. That and impact impact grenades, I mean, it depends what site you're on. Um, but obviously it doesn't have impacts, but I don't think I've ever used the bulletproof camera on mute, except for maybe in like competitive where you have a full on strategy and you need a bulletproof and he's the only guy, et cetera. But you don't need to worry about that. Just bring the C4. And then the mute jammers, I would just recommend not using them for wall denial because Bandit and Kate are just so much better for wall denial. The Mute Jammers are really, really strong for countering drones and playing off the Mute Jammers with the shotgun, which is why you also want to use the shotgun mute because you can use those Mute Jammers to kind of just swing off close range doorways and stuff. It counters literally so many operators and allows you to play that pump really safely. So W Mute Jammers. <coughs> Castle, loadout, 
is uh, pretty pretty simple. Flash hider on that one, vertical grip laser. You can see that again all the time. And then I run the magnified B. This is the ACOG scope I pretty much always go to. And if the gun has an ACOG scope, I am typically running it. Now, if you're a newer player, I just played with Dr. Disrespect the other day. Wow, wow, crazy, right? Mind blown. Anyway, he actually mentioned that he likes the one-time sights better because it gives him a better view of what's going on. He's able to actually react a little more. And I thought that made a lot of sense. Like it does zoom in your screen a lot. You have to really know the maps for these uh, long range scopes to be more effective. So if you're a newer player and you're not used to the maps, probably just stick to the one times and you might find it easier. And then once you've learned the maps, you can bump it up to those ACOG scopes because they are really good for those long range gunfights. Especially with Castle, because he has this secondary shorty, you can make a lot of long range uh, angles, make rotates. You can do really nice complex setups that allow you to hold these long angles and surprise people with them. So I also run the shorty again, iron sight, laser sight. Um, and you know, you can even get kills with that too, but that's my castle loadout. And we got the CAG esports skin on with pulse. It's going to look pretty similar, except he doesn't have the ACOG option. I do run the horizontal grip on the, on the UMP. And, uh, that's because with the one time sight, there's literally no recoil. You can also even run extended barrel suppressor on this. If you want one of the two, if the gun does not have a lot of recoil, you can switch to these two. The extended barrel will give you a little more damage, but most of the time I find the suppressor is just better just because the extended barrel isn't actually doing enough damage to kill them in like a bullet less, for example. And it's only doing four more damage as, oh, you can't see that because I'm covering it up now, but uh, with my face. But yeah, flash hider, um, just because then you can hit the headshots and you know, it takes a little bit of recoil. Honestly, I'll just put the suppressor on just to say, hey, it's, it really doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, again, the hollow B is what my go-to is on pretty much all those. And then I run the M45. I mean, either one of these pistols is fine. This one just does more damage. So if they are low, it's just like the odds of the one shotting them are a little easier. Whereas this one, you kind of have to aim for the head because the damage drop off is pretty heavy. Uh, and then again, C4, uh, you basically never want to run shield or like observation blockers on this guy. C4 is just by far the best utility. Then we have Doc next. Doc, I run the P90. You can run the MP5. Most people will run the MP5. If you are, uh, I run flash hide or vert grip, ACOG scope. And then with the P90, I run the suppressor on it with the ACOG. And the reason for this is it has a 51 round mag. I find the recoil manageable. It is it is a little higher, but if you pull down just straight, it's just straight down recoil. Then you can literally create like a laser beam where if they walk through it, their head is getting completely fried off. Plus with the suppressor, they don't know where you're shooting from and it sounds super hot. So that's something that I just, this is just like a personal like fun pick. If I want to play Doc and have some fun and run around and shoot people, I'll do this and kind of pre-fire and kind of, it's kind of goofy, but it can work. I would, I recommend trying that. I, I think it's, I think it's one of like my favorite things to do when I'm just like bored. So if you're looking for a fun time, then run the P90. Uh, now you definitely want the bailiff. This allows you to make rotate holes, sight setup, lines of sight. It just, you always want some sort of sight creation or something on the fly where you can make vertical holes or anything. And the bailiff is really, really nice for that. Very, very useful. Um, plus you have like really solid primary. So you shouldn't be switching to your secondary for kills anyway. And if you need to, Close range bail if it's actually not that bad. Then I run the barbed wire. Uh, BP is not bad either, but I just find I solo queue a lot. The barbed wire is great for info. Even when I'm in a stack, I like to have that extra info, uh, which isn't relying on my teams actually using the cameras because sometimes they won't. But the bulletproof is actually maybe maybe the better option if you're in a five stack, if I'm being honest. But me, I'm just like, I like the safety of the barbed wire. I really like barbed wire. I play off barbed wire nicely, and I just find it's very useful. If you don't, switch to the BP. It's going to be great. Rook, I do the same thing. I run the P90. Uh, I have no idea. As you can tell, I've only run the P90 because I haven't even done this setup. But if I were to run this guy now with the MP5, um, you can run extended barrel. You could run suppressor. Flash hider is best for like hitting those headshots, like I mentioned with the dock loadout. Uh, but yeah, I'm probably going to stick to the P90 with the same for the same reasons. Uh, either pistol is fine. Whatever you prefer, you know, play around with it. And then I run the impact grenades. I think impact grenades, again, like I mentioned earlier, side by side with the C4 is just really good for making rotates, making plays, killing shields, um, impact tricking. There's a lot you can do with the impacts and the beepers are nice if you do need that extra information, but rarely, very rarely am I going to switch to those. And the observation blockers are kind of ass. Like I basically, I literally never use these unless I'm playing alibi. I can set up like a prisma behind them, which we'll get to in a bit. Cap cans loadout is the nine by 19 VSN is what I'm going with, with the primary. If you're on the sausage, you are kind of insane. That shotgun's pretty bad. And this is one of the guns where I do run the compensator on. I find that 
there is a lot of side to side recoil on this one and that's what the compensator counteracts. So this way I can just pull straight down. I find it just creates a laser beam of a gun. Um, try this out. If you don't run the compensator on this, try this out and let me know what you think because I do think, I genuinely think this is like the best attachment for this guy. And I run the reflex B. I just like how it works with the compensator and on this gun. I just really like the reflex B. I don't know why, that's just what I run. PMM, one of the best pistols in the game. If you're not running the PMM, you're actually trying because this pistol is complete dog water. Um, so rock the PMM, rock the C4. When CapCat in, had impacts, it was actually, sometimes I'd run impacts, sometimes I'd run C4, but it doesn't matter. He doesn't anymore. Who cares? Then we got Tachanka, and holy crap, I have an opinion right here. It's not that Tachanka's ass. I mean, that's the typical opinion I have, but it's that if you're running Tachanka and you're using this gun, you are literally being the biggest troll of all time. You know why? Because because you just you don't need this. You don't need. It. I know it has the ACOG, but the LMG is literally Tachanka's entire ability. Tachanka's best asset is this LMG, and if you're just not using it, it makes no sense that you're picking Tachanka at this point. It's like you're picking him for the gun that is worse than his other gun, which is great for playmaking, rotates, etc., etc., etc. You could run the PMM. Uh, it's probably smarter to run the Bearing Nine. I'm just gonna switch that right now. I don't play Tachanka very often, as you can tell, but I'm thinking of actually doing a Tachanka video, Tachanka highlight clip video, because I think there are some cool plays you can make with Shamika Launcher. I don't think he's the most consistent operator, and I definitely don't think he's like the best pick, but I think there is some really cool stuff you can do, and I kind of want to show that off in a video, so let me know what you think about that, but uh, yeah, run the, run the LMG, and then whatever site you want. I like the red dot C on it for some reason. Um, there you go, and then, uh, oh yeah, and then the barbed wire. Again, same concept here. You can run shield. Um, actually, a lot of people do run the shield, so we'll touch on this a bit. I don't like the shield just because I find playing behind shields is just, it's not very meta right now. It's not very strong. People can destroy the shields really easily. There's not a lot of Jaeger or my play right now. And also, you can just get kind of fried off the shield a lot. I like having the barbed wire. Again, extra info, being able to play off of it and also use it in combination with the fire to kind of stall them and slow them down. And um, yeah, that's why that's why I don't like I don't really run the shield on them. I don't really run shields on anyone anymore, to be honest. I don't remember the last time I placed a shield down. That's kind of sad. Jaeger, um, I actually really like the carbine. A lot of people say it's bad. I run the compensator on it. Maybe that's why. Maybe they think it's bad because they don't run compensator. I run hollow A. I'm actually gonna switch this out. I don't I don't really like the hollow A anymore. Um, but I do like it on his gun. Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I'll keep it. Um, so yeah, there's my loadout with the Jaeger. Very straightforward pistol. Uh, I do run the observation blockers on him. I'm going to switch over to BP. I feel like the BP is more consistent and just a little easier and just a little more useful. It depends on site. Site dependent, you might want to bring the observation blockers. So feel free to switch between the two. Try them both out. Jaeger's still a really, really strong operator, and I think he's very underrated right now. Sorry, it sounds super nasally. I've been having some cat allergies these days. Anyway, doesn't matter. We'll move on. Bandit MP7. Now, you could go iron sights on this. This is the one gun where you could rock the iron sights, get that 5% ADS increase boost, uh, because the iron sights are very usable. They're very nice on this gun. However, I still run the hollow B. I, I'm not an iron sight guy. I'm just not an iron sight guy. Uh, this gun doesn't have a lot of recoil, so I rock the extended barrel, uh, but you could feel free to use like flash hider. If you if you don't want the extended barrel suppressor, rock the flash hider. Uh, that's the move on this gun. And then uh, C4 over barbed wire, because C4s, again, are OP. You can also use the C4s, like, out the breach. If they if you try to ban a trick or something, you mess up, or you, they get the wall open, you use C4 out the breach and potentially get kills that way, too, which is pretty nice. On Frost, I rock the extended barrel. There's, like, no recoil on this gun. You could you could go back to Flash. Again, Flash is the move on this. Uh, ACOG scope, what's to, what's to complain about? And then you got the secondary shotgun. There's no point running the primary shotgun because you have the secondary shotgun. Um, unless you really want to, like, hug corners and, like kill people like if you're going for kills with the shotgun then that's the play but like this is great for sight setup i actually prefer it for sight setup does better breaching better destruction and then i run the bp over the shield mainly because you can put the bp on walls above the frost mat so like you could put one top garage stairs on on rafters a clubhouse and put a frost mat on the stairs as well and they're coming up looking at the bp and they go to punch it and then they just land in a frost mat there's a lot of cool plays you can make with the bp um so usually i'll put a frost mat under it wherever i put it and i think that's just a very nice play I think it's a very nice play. Sorry, I'm trying to speed run this because I'm only at Valk and it's been like 15 minutes already. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to chug through for you guys. Valkyrie, Hollow B, Flash Hider, very simple. MPX, I mean, I'm, I'm typically not running the shotgun unless it's Mute or um, Smoke. I mean, Rook and Doc, you could run shotgun as well. That shotgun's pretty nice. Deeg with the uh, muzzle brake, should put the laser sight on that as well. Actually, I think I kind of like this without the laser sight. 
because most of the time I'm like hip firing or trolling with it or something, or like, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Let's put it on. And then the impacts, if you want to impact trick again, switch the impacts or, but I run C4 pretty much all the time. Cause then you can see four below with the cameras. It's a very nice combo that you should probably be using. Cav, Cav is like pretty bad. Her guns are not the greatest. I'm typically always running the shotgun because I like to save my impact grenades and then make rotates with a shotgun and open hatches. So if there's like a bunch of hatches around the map, I want to open them all up. So I have a multiple different flank groups that I flank routes that I could come from with the cav. So I run the shotgun most of the time. The red dot B is kind of nice. Macy J pointed this out. Like if you're using the red dot B on a shotgun, then the spread of the bullets will follow the trail of this inner circle here, which is pretty cool. But uh, now that iron sights give you ADS buff, I'm actually going to switch back to iron sights and run the iron sight laser sight combo. Um, if I am running M12, I put the suppressor on. I haven't I haven't played Cav this e season besides the shotgun, apparently. Uh, and then the pistol should also have the laser sight. Uh, I don't play Cav much. She's a little risky, but she can she can be fun and she can really change the course of a game. So uh, if you have people that aren't droning well or just like rushing really fast and like being sloppy, bust out the Cav for sure. Really sad about Echo losing his ACOG scope, but I run the Hollow B on him. He's still a great operator. Uh, his Echo drones are really, really nice. Put the laser sight on the secondary as well. I run the extended barrel on this, by the way, apparently. I don't know if I had that consistent with my other ops, but extended barrel on this is nice. If not, uh, I think I use the flash hider if I'm not using the extended barrel. And then I run the impacts. So the impacts allow to make plays with the yokai drone so you see someone on the other side of the wall you impact the wall you know you echo them then you impact the wall they don't hear the impact because they're echoed and then you just shoot them in the side of the head it's a great way to get some free kills mira ooh, vector is so nice i run the compensator on her that's actually surprising i'm surprised i have the compensator uh because i know i run suppressor on goyo with the acog but i guess compensator because i i was hitting some na nasty clips the other day with the mirror so i, I think the compensator is actually the play um, pull straight down, hollow B, whatever, whatever one times you prefer, you know, the one time site, it's completely up to you. Um, so don't, don't take that too like, oh, I have to, cause pox unlocks does it. But what you should do is get the pox unlocks charm by subscribing to me on Twitch. Now this is what you need. This is probably the biggest difference in all my loadouts is I'm using this on every gun and I'm feeling hot. I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling sexy. I know the professional rainbow six players got my back every step of the way with unlimited yaps and unlimited swag and unlimited, unlimited skill. So yeah, go get your charm, equip it to all your guns. That's how you become a professional Rainbow Six player. Uh, and then I run the Nitro Cell, obviously, because it's the best. And with the mirrors, you can throw C4s off them and stop plants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Very good. Mirrors are really, really strong op still. Uh, I think she's criminally, uh, uh, criminally hated on still. I don't know. She's good. She, it doesn't matter. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm saying she's still really strong and she's not banned very much. So she should be picked more, but she isn't for whatever reason. Flash Hider on Legion. Legion, one of the best beginner-friendly ops. If you are watching this video and you're new to the game, Legion is super, super easy to use, super, super strong. Uh, has a great weapon, low recoil. Just throw the Flash Hider on, run some impacts, make some plays, stop shields with the goo mines. Fantastic op. Op, op. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of breath. I'm talking so fast. Compensator on Ella. So this is another op that I run Compensator on. Okay, not Flash Hider. Uh, whatever site you prefer. I actually really like this gun. I haven't played Ella in quite a while. Um... And then I run the muzzle brake on the pistol. But uh, yeah, she's she's still really good. Again, barbed wire over shield. Uh, I, I'm pretty much barbed wire all day, every day, baby. Vigil, uh, I run flash hider on. I don't play Vigil very much. Honestly, you could rock the Boshi. Boshi's pretty nice. I haven't played Vigil in a while, clearly, because I don't even have the Boshi loadout set up. If I were to, though, I would run the vert grip, I think, just to reset the, the aim a little quicker and then the ACOG sight. And then on the SMG-12, I haven't been playing a lot of Vigil. I know he counters Deimos, but I just think Mute and Tuburo are much better counters that provide a lot more options. Because even if you're running the Vigil, your team, your, the rest of your team can still get tracked by Deimos, you know? But if you're playing Mute or Tuburo, you can freeze them. They can stand in a Mute Jammer, and then everybody's kind of countering them, right? So I think Mute mute is definitely the best counter Deimos, but you can do whatever you want. It's your life. Put the Hollow B on there. So that's my SMG 12. And then Impact Grenades. I'm, I'm never going to pick a BP on Vigil. That's that's insane. That's an insane play. Maestro is honestly super, super strong. I've tried between the Compensator and Flash Hider a bit, but I've come to the conclusion I think Flash Hider is just a little nicer. It's a little more predictable. That initial burst can be pretty active and shoot up in the air. So yeah, I run the Flash on that. And uh, then, yeah, the Bailiff. The Bailiff all, all day. All day, dude. 
Uh, should have the laser sight on though. I didn't realize I didn't. Impact grenades and barbed wire. You can kind of switch between the two. I do run barbed wire quite a bit, but the impacts again are nice for opening walls off the info of your cameras, impact tricking, which is really, really big. So opening the top of reinforcement, throwing it up over and breaking like the hard breach on the other side, which is great on like theme park basement, consulate basement, uh, chalet drone hole. You can throw it through the drone hole on chalet on that snowmobile garage wall. So a lot of good uses for impact tricking as well. Alibi run extended barrel on. Not a lot of not a lot of recoil on this. I actually flash hider is also good. You can kind of I'm probably gonna put flash back on just to keep that recoil a little more manageable, make it even more of a laser. Uh, and then I run the bailiff. Should have laser sight on that as well. Again, laser sight should go on everything. I have proxies on right now, which honestly is not a bad pick. It's nice to have that info. But I, if you want to mess around and put like prisms behind the observation blockers, that's another fun little strategy that you can use as well. There's just, just lots of little, you just want to be adding stuff to your playbook. You know, you want to have constant plays that you can make off of this stuff. I run the suppressor on Clash. Clash is such a, she's so crazy. I don't know. You could run the shorty even and just do some, be absolutely insane. But yeah, this gun is like basically like what, what me and my friends call the pocket F2, where it's essentially like Twitch's F2 uh, as a secondary weapon. It's so, so strong. You don't have to run suppressor, flash hider if not, um, very straightforward and then I run the impacts because it is nice to be able to throw them break stuff uh and you don't really need the barber because you're clash you can just you can just put your face into everything and get the info that way you don't need the barb right you could bring the shield for your team if they want it like if they're like hey can we get a shield you could do that that's a, that's that's a completely normal and fine play to make aug on Cade. now some people really really like the tcsg i run the flash hider on here um hollow b yet again some people really love this gun and if you're gonna run this gun i won't hate you for it i just personally really really suck with it you can put the suppressor on but it does make your gun a lot longer so you have to be aware of that if you're like trying to tuck yourself around doorways you might be sticking out um so you could run the suppressor you could just not run it and that's a totally valid option cowboy pistol is honestly i'm gonna throw this on right now because i only have the one time sight on the aug this gives you a little more range, but you're going to have to land that headshot. It's going to be tough. Uh, either way, you're dealing with like a, what are they called? Like a boom, boom. Like, you know, it's not like a fast firing pistol, a slow fire rate pistol. I don't know, with a lot of recoil. So it's, it doesn't really make a big difference. You should be using your primary most of the time. And then I run C4. Up. C4 all day. C4 all day. We've heard about it. We know about it. That's what's up. Mozzie, I use Compensator. I run the Commando on Mozzie. Uh, now that the Roni doesn't have the 1.5, I think the Commando is just the better gun. The, the, the Roni's fine, though. You can run the Roni as well. It has a high fire rate, which is nice. Good for headshots. I run Flash on it. And if you're running the Commando, Compensator uh, with that Reflex B. That Reflex B is nice. I don't play a lot of Mozzie. Uh, my go-to is Mute over Mozzie. I think Mute is just significantly better. He has an extra Mute Jammer. He achieves a lot more with his utility. Uh, he counters a lot more people. And I like his loadout better. But Mozzie, you know, he's fine. He, he, he's got a purpose. He's got, he's kind of got a purpose. You know, if you're using the drones to gather info and like actually playing them with that C4 and the drone and like making plays that way, totally valid, totally cool. I'm not going to hate you for it. Warden, uh, MPX should have the laser sight flash hider on that. And then the SMG 12 with the hollow B and the vert grip uh, laser sight again, laser sight on everything. I have actually been running quite a bit of shotgun on the warden as well, running this combo and playing him in that close range area without being able to be flashed. Um, you could bring the shield. I run the C4 again, C4 supremacy. Uh, but yeah, either one of these works. It just depends what the site is and what your plan is. If you're planning it out before the round shotgun is great, especially like if you know where you're going to play and you know, it's going to be close range and you know, they might flashbang you and you're picking the one you're like, Oh, I can just lock this area down shotgun them when they try to push me. And that's going to work out great. And that's fantastic. So yeah, you can switch between the two TCSG. Again, if you want to run, go with the TCSG, be my guest. I think you're kind of insane, but some people are just straight up beasts with it. Uh, I run suppressor ACOG on the vector, the recoil, there's a little bit, but the fast fire rate and the suppressor combo, I just love it. I honestly find that the suppressor is the best recoil for this gun with the ACOG. I know I have compensator on mirror and we touched on this a little bit, but the suppressor or the extended barrel or like no barrel, essentially, I just, I don't know something about the suppressor on this makes me feel like I can aim better, but maybe I'm insane. Otherwise run compensator. You can make your own decisions, okay, guys? You guys have brains, too. I know. I know you're listening to me. 10,000 hours in the game. Lots of experience. Champion, gamer, professional Rainbow Six player. Whatever you want to say. But you guys can think for yourself. And you know your rank and the players you play against better than I do because you've spent more time in that area. So trust yourself. Make your own decisions, you know? It's okay to take my advice. 
but there's certain times where you need to not take my advice because you know better for yourself to a degree, to a degree. Like if you're playing zero every game and you're just baiting for kills, I would, I would, I would start taking my advice because you got to get active. You'll be able to make plays and you want to be able to do that in order to carry your team. Anyway, let's move on. Well, my, I haven't played a lot of well, my, I'm surprised I have this presser on here. Uh, flash hider is great and there's no grip. So like I would just put flash. Hider. I don't actually know why this press was on, but it's not a terrible play. And then Keratos is good for making like holes in the wall, etc. This skin combo is disgusting. So I'm gonna change it real quick. And then I run the impacts. Well, my very straightforward, just throw discs around and peek people. That's there's not a lot to say about them. Oryx, same setup as Legion here with the Flash Hider. Oryx is one of the most meat, like, dog-ass operators in the game right now. And that's all I'll say. Bring the barbed wire. Um, Malusi, same setup on the MP5 as Doc and Rook. Uh, if you're on the shotgun, something is something has gone terribly wrong where you're, where you're doing that. And then, yeah, pistol with the muzzle break, impact grenades. Uh, could run the BP again, but impacts, impacts pretty much all day. Uh, I actually just put this on the other day for just a second to play it for fun. Suppressor, you know, you could do that. But the DMR has that ACOG site, and this is where we finally see that horizontal grip coming out on the DMR uh, and the muzzle brake, of course. You could run the suppressor as well, um, but that single shot uh, muzzle brake assistance is very nice. Barbed wire on that too. You could run BP on her as well. Especially uh, in combination with the gates. You know, the gates burn some utility. You can EMP some drones with the BP. Um, or you could just play the barbed wire. Have even more info. Three three gates for info and then barbed wire for info. Very nice. Let me take a sip of coffee. You guys can all just... Everybody, let's just take a 10-second break. That literally helped nothing. Nothing came out. And then we're at Thunderbird, who is really bad. You could just play Doc. That's my that's my theory. It, there's ex more extensive uh, logic on that, but I'm not going to get into it right now. I would just say, if you guys trust me with your entire heart and soul, you'll just never play Thunderbird again and just play Doc, okay? Muzzle break on the spear. Um, and some people have asked me, like, why do you run muzzle break on ARs? And the reason is the muzzle break reduces the first shot. So if, if the initial three bullets doesn't jump your gun a lot, it's just that first bullet and then your gun is level, muzzle break is a play because it will stop that initial jump, which is the case in a lot of guns, is the, is the fact that it jumps up right only on the first bullet and then it's a laser. So it's like kind of like, brr, 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 you know what I mean? So if that's the case, then muzzle break is good. And there are other guns I run it on, which will show off later. Um, flash hider or extended barrel on the bearing nine, either or, and then the barbed wire. You could use shield, uh, yeah, or you could even run the shotgun if you really wanted, because you have that bearing nine. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a Thunderbird fan. I'm a Thunderbird hater, if I'm being honest. Thorn. If you're picking Thorn, you're picking for the gun suppressor or extended barrel. There's literally no recoil on this thing, especially with the vertical grip. Uh, you could even throw on the horizontal grip if you wanted, and then run like a flash hider. Uh, see how that goes. I run the CZ. I don't like, wait, what, what do I have on this? Why would I run CZ when I have glazed waffle? I could literally glaze these kids. No, it's fine. We'll run the CZ. Um, I, I barely ever play Thorn either. Um, shield or barbed wire, either or preference. I use barb. Again, I'm a barb guy. You guys know this. We talked about it. And then we got a zombie, and zombie's like super strong, super strong. I don't even have the laser sight on. Um, compensator, if you're running the 9x19, same as cap can. However, I think the shotgun is really good, especially when you're solo queue, because you can do sight setup, make lines of sight. You have the ACOG scope, so you can spawn peek. You can do some ridiculous things, and it does a ton of damage. 69 damage, so two shots in the body, and they're dead. And then the deagle, of course, with the impact grenades. So basically, I formed a hierarchy of secondary gadgets. If you haven't noticed, it goes C4, impact grenades, barbed wire, and then probably uh, shield. No, sorry. Yeah, shield, bulletproof. Maybe, no, bulletproof, then shield, like frost. Bulletproof shield, <coughs> and then proxies. I'd probably put proxies above shield, honestly. And then, like, observation blockers. I don't even know what else there is, but that's that's pretty much how I go most of the time, unless I'm feeling like a certain way about something someday. On Solus, you can run either primary. You can run uh, Hollow B, Flash Hider on the P90. Um, 
Or you could run, you know what? I don't even run, why don't I put suppressor on this thing? Then it's like, then it looks like, kind of like my dock loadout, but it's it's not the same. It's not the same without the ACOG, you know what I mean? But it's still good. It's still good. The shotgun's nice because you can use her gadget to floor bang people, like people who are on drones or whatever it may be. Uh, I should put iron sights on this though, iron sight, laser sight. And then you have the SMG to actually take the fights at range. I have muzzle break on this one as well. So it looks like I am just full on muzzle breaking uh, the SMGs, but I, I, I do know, or sorry, the SMG 11, but flash hider is also good. Flash hider is also good. This one's weird because the recoil on the SMG 11 is so strange. This one is basically, it's not actually off my observation. It's just how I feel about the gun. Like I've, I've played it so much that it's like, I don't know, I just feel better when I'm using the muzzle brake. But sometimes, sometimes like you might find the, the flash is nicer. It's just, it's really like, give them both. I would say give them both five rounds each. Cause I find with the flash hider, sometimes it will randomly jump to the side in the middle of your spray. Like after like three bolts, it'll just fly to the side afterwards. And I find with the muzzle brake, it doesn't do that for whatever reason. So that's why, that's why I think that's the main reason behind why I do that. But I, I couldn't tell you, you know, it's just my experience is backing it up. Extended barrel on the MP7 again, uh, again, could run the iron sights on this, um, like bandit and then bailiff laser sight, barbed wire, Fenrir, exceptional operator. If you're looking for someone who's got tons of info and very strong, Fenrir is your guy. This is my two burrow loadout. I don't run the MPX. I run the DMR. This thing is disgusting. So much damage and they put an ACOG sight on it and it shoots super quick and has zero recoil. This thing is literally death. This is called death. They should rename this gun to death from AR 15.5. What is that even? That does not say death. So this gun should be called death and uh, yeah, pistol, whatever. I mean, the secondary is whatever. You're, you're going to be using the primary most of the time. And then I run C4, of course. Now, if you're running the MPX, this is probably what I would put on it. Um, I might as well upgrade my loadouts while we're here, you know, while we're here. Well, no charm. No wonder I don't like this gun. No, I'm just kidding. This gun's good too, obviously. Uh, lots of fire rate headshot machine. If you like the higher fire rate weapons, go ahead, play the MPX. I won't be mad. I'll just be disappointed. The DMR is also nice for like popping holes in walls uh, very quickly and like making plays that way. And that's our defenders. Let's freaking go. We got through the defenders. Good job, team. Good job. Proud of you guys. Nether coffee break, huh? Getting cold. Moving on to the attackers. We have Sledge. And this is where the muzzle brake comes out yet again. Muzzle brake on the L8, I find it's just the best. Onslaught charm, not pox charm, but it's fine because this is an OG charm and I really like it. And I had to put it on at least one gun. Uh, again, could put the laser sight on here, but who cares? Grenades, uh, I actually, you could run flashbangs as well. I would say flashbangs are kind of on par with grenades right now. Grenades are nice because you have that destruction. If you're solo queue, you probably want the destruction capabilities. Breaking stuff is very important, very useful. Um, it's There's a lot of risk to not having destruction. So having the grenades is nice because then if you do come across something that you need to break, you can use them, but you can also use them for pushing in and making plays, same way as the flashbangs. So again, we have a whole handful of new secondary utility we're dealing with. EMP grenades you could run. I, I personally fucking hate these. I'm gonna drop the F-bomb because I'm mad. I have people that pick EMPs over everything and it makes me so annoyed because I think they're just so bad. Like, let's just go back to the days where we just break the utility and open the wall. Why do we have to use these things? They're, they, they, you have to be precise. There's so many counters in them. There's so many workarounds to them. I'm not going to get into it too deep in this video, but like, dude, oh man, I, I, it's, let's move on. I can't even talk about it right now. We'll get there. We got Thatcher, same set. Psych? Why do I have flash hide? No, put the muzzle brake. You can, I mean, flash hider is also fine. This gun doesn't have a lot of recoil, but I think the muzzle brake's the best. And I'm running the L8 over the AR-33. If you really like the AR-33, this is probably what I would set it up like. I, I clearly have not used it this season. Uh, flash hider, ACOG, vert grip, laser. Uh, your call, your call. And then claymores or breach chargers. This is site dependent. Claymore is nice for like runouts if you're holding a breach, um, hop outs, runouts, et cetera. Uh, flanks even if you want, like if you're in the building and you have... You know, you have the opportunity to might as well slam them down. Breach charges are really nice if you're actually getting in. You need to be able to break stuff. Uh, if you're solo queuing as Thatcher, maybe that's the play. I don't know. Most of the time, you're not going to be in the position as Thatcher to actually breach charge stuff. <clears throat> and if you are, you should probably be a different operator because your EMPs probably aren't doing much. But I'm not hating on Thatcher. Thatcher's a fantastic operator still. But we don't need to ban him all the time, guys. Okay, there's, there's better bans. It's okay. 
Then we got Ash. Oh, actually, let's go back to Thatcher for a sec because I want to touch on the EMP grenade thing. These are like infinitely better than EMP grenades. If you think that Thatcher EMPs are on the same level as secondary EMPs, they're not. The reason for that is they have a massive radius. They'll clear anything on the well, wall, no matter where it is, especially Cade. EMP grenades, the, the, the secondary EMP grenades suck against Cade. These very, very strong, completely counter Cade, especially if you throw two. That Then it, compare, it, it uh, counters Cade tricking as well. So EMP, Thatcher EMPs, so much better than the secondary EMPs and they last twice as long. So you're not gonna get, like if you're trying to EMP something with the secondary EMP and you're acing at the same time, the second layer of the ace charge is gonna get destroyed by the time it resets. So you have to use both EMP, secondary EMPs on the on the K claw or bandit or whatever, just to get that one panel open. So it's very, very important that you're, it's just so much more room for error with the secondary EMPs. And I find most of the time you are actually landing in that area of error and it's completely screwing you over so thatcher's thatcher's just much better much safer less risk and i'm a big fan of playing risk free because that's basically all you can control is the amount of risk you're taking and uh, by minimizing it you're setting yourself up for more success and then we have ash let's move on now that's uh, the, i got my little gripe out we're good ash r4c absolutely gangster flash hider acog site uh, and when I say ACOG, you can run any of these three ACOGs, you know, whatever is your preference here. My preference is, mag is Magnify B over all of them. Uh, so anytime I'm running ACOG, I'm running this, but you can use these as well. It is complete preference. It, just like the, just like the one time sites and iron sites. I mean, if you like iron sites better then go ahead and do that too, you know? And then we have the G36. I mean, the G36 also really, really good. Um, I just, I've been in love with the R4C and it's like classic. It's nostalgic. It's nice. Um, and then I run the five, seven. No, I, there's no way. Why am I running the five, seven? I'm running this pistol more damage. We'll take it. I like the breach charge on Ash cause you're playing entry. You're getting in the building. They, they, they suit her play style very nicely. The claymores you can run if you want to like bait on repel and be like a weird baiting Ash, which is strange. You should be getting in there, uh, especially for vertical destruction, you know, breach charging the floor. Uh, a lot of good plays with the breach charges, getting castles, etc., so you can save your ashes for other things. Solid op. Very solid right now. Thermite, I'm running the 556 with the flash hider, a coscope. The shotgun, I mean, honestly, you could do some crazy rushes with the therm off a of thermite breach and the shotgun. Uh, so don't count it out of uh, the game yet, but I would run the iron sights on that again. And then the M45 and flashes and smokes. I'm, I'm like a 90% flashes on this. Like 90% of the time I'm running flashbangs on Thermite and then like 10% I'm running the smoke grenades. The smoke grenades are nice for planting. Obviously they cut off lines of sight, but the flashes are nice for having plays that you can make with them throughout the game. So there's a dog barking. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. I apologize if you can, but it will not shut up. Um, okay, I shut it up myself. So the smoke grenades, if you have a plan for what you want to do with them, pick them. If you don't, pick the flashes. They're more versatile, better for playmaking. You can completely blind someone, push them, blind them again, peek them, kill them. Freebies. Absolute freebies with flashbangs. I love flashbangs. Um, and they're great. Twitch. DMR Twitch is not bad. If you're running the DMR, though, I would run the vert grip. I, I haven't I haven't run this in a while. But the DMR is not bad. The shotgun's not bad. If you want to do some crazy shotgun plays, this is the shotgun to do it with. I love I love the shotgun. And then horizontal grip on the shotgun. If you're running the shotgun, run horizontal grip. You don't need the vert grip because you're shotgunning them. And this gives you the extra movement speed, which is nice. And then laser sight, iron sight, you're gonna ADS faster. This is great if you're like want to do some crazy shotgun rushes with your boys. I love it. Most of the time though, I'm running the F2, flash hider. Uh, ACOG scope. You can also don't be a, don't be afraid to run just the one time sights on this. There's a lot of recoil on this gun. If you can't control it, the one time sight might be a better option. And again, whatever you prefer. On this on this gun, I'd probably run. I would probably run red dot C on it. I don't know, just because just because that's probably what I would do. Uh, Magnum or P9. The P9 is a great pistol. Magnum's definitely harder to aim. I'd probably rock P9. And then smoke grenades all day of the week. Never run fucking claymores over smoke grenades, or you're a complete moron. Um, mainly because smoke grenades are great for playmaking. You cut off angles, take other fights. If you're in a situation where there's multiple angles on you and you have to push, smoking one of them off and fighting the other guy is fantastic. They are so useful. The claymores, you shouldn't be like baiting on a repel anyway with Twitch. So like 
don't bring them. Just force yourself not to bring them, and it will force you into a play style where these are going to be better. Like, in the long run, the smoke range is going to be better every single time. Unless the one, like 99%, let's say 99%, there might be 1% of the time where those claymores are actually what you really need. Monty, we're running the shield. Obviously, you can't not. How could you not? You could run the Magnum, kind of insane, but P9, more bullets. You have to reload less often. You know what I just thought of? The Magnum might be the play now that you can reload behind the shield. Oh my gosh, I'm going to do a video. Let's do a, let's do a Monty Magnum video. What are we thinking? That's kind of be a crazy play because you can reload behind the shield now. So you might as well just use it. Before it was like, if you use all your bullets, you're screwed because now you have to reload. But now you can actually do that and just keep reloading. So yeah, run sure, run the Magnum. I don't care. I don't know. Maybe that's a crazy play. I might try that. Um, this is one that gets me. Ice cold running EMPs on Monty at all the time. You want smokes on shields, guys. Why? Because if you have to push, you couldn't get shot from multiple angles. This allows you to block off those angles and face the one guy at a time. Especially in the case of shields where you have to sometimes get aggressive. If you don't have the smokes, it's going to be really, really hard because you're going to get swarmed and you're going to die. You can't take multiple people out with shields. You have to you have to create 1v1 fights and the smokes allow you to do that. Hard breach tools, not terrible, especially like if you're in a five stack, I understand the hard breaches. I understand the EMPs very rarely when it's like we need an EMP grenade. However, smoke grenade should be the play like 95% of the time while you're running these ops. Okay. Or sorry, Monty specifically. Um, smokes are really, really strong. I think they're, I think they're just underutilized and underrated. If I'm playing glass, I'm not bringing the gone six because I like being able to be aggressive in those close ranges with the bearing nine or the PMM PMM also really good. I I've kind of converted back off the PMM on glass to the bearing nine, but don't sleep on this thing, dude. It's, it's kind of nasty, but you already have the glass sniper. You might as well just flip that down and use that. I run suppressor on this thing. Uh, you could run muzzle break, but I like the suppressor cause then they don't know where you're shooting at through the smoke and they can't shoot back and actually like smoke bang you essentially. Well, they can try, but they don't know where you're at. So the suppressor is, I think the best play, um, like play of the game, Overwatch style on glass. And then vertical grip, uh, just control a bit of the recoil so you can kind of fire a little quicker. I run red dot C because when you're actually down the thermal site, it'll just be a single dot. It's perfect for aiming. I think this is this is one of the situations where it's like this one is better than most of the others just because like you don't need all that extra like shit in your way essentially and it just makes a nice clear image. Uh, so that's what I'm a big advocate for. And then you can run grenades if your team needs them, but you should be running smokes. And this is why. Glass's entire ability revolves around the fact that he can see through smoke grenades. If you are not running smoke grenades, you do not have an ability anymore. So if you're running grenades all the time on glass, yeah, you're going to think he's bad because you're not using him to what his potential is. And that's throwing down a smoke, walking into it, letting your thermal tight charge up again, which takes 0.5 seconds. Thermal tight. I know I called it a thermal tight. It's a thermal sight. And then you just stand in the smoke grenade and shoot them. You can make aggressive plays where they can't see you. They don't know where you're shooting from. And you can just, you can really make round winning plays with this guy. Um, he is a little more niche, but you have to be using the smoke grenades. You have, if you're running, and if you're running claymores, what the fuck? What the fuck, dude? Uh, don't run claymores on him. Don't run claymores. Glasses, he shouldn't be played like a baiter. He's not a baiter op. The only time you should not be pushing and playing aggressive with him is if you're covering. Like you're covering your team for a plant. You're working with your team and you're holding a push while you get the bomb down, that's the only time when Glass is good for like that baiting, like play it back, play it slow style. But he is really, really strong for aggression. Throwing a smoke grenade and walking into the site, throwing a smoke grenade on the site door, walking into it, looking around for fucking banana people and plowing them down, power move, power move. So I think Glass is a little bit misunderstood, uh, but definitely run those smokes. Unless your team, maybe your team's already bringing smokes for you, you're communicating, you're working well with them, and they can actually smoke for you. If that's the case, grenades are great because then you have some destruction that you might not have had before. But you want to weigh it against what your team is also bringing, right? On Fuse, you can run the shield. The Fuse shield is not bad, but then he also has the best gun in the game, which is the AK-12. Flash Hider, Magnified B. This loadout, pristine. Absolute plowage, Okay. If you're looking for a gun to kill people and you and you just want to be good on one gun, run the AK-12, run Ace, run Fuse. I'd probably recommend Ace because he's he's just a better op. But 
fuse flash hider fantastic pmm pistol all day of the week this i'm not even i'm not even gonna bother putting attachments on it because this gun is so bad pmm absolute god tier on fuse you can run the hard breach charge you can run the breach charges i like the smokes you know my opinion on that the breach charges are nice i do run breach charges very occasionally or hard breach charges if i'm doing a vertical take where i'm fusing the floor above i want to apply pressure to the site with breach charges as well so i can actually open up angles and this is a nice combo with his gadget because you could place a, cl a cluster charge somewhere, place a fuse charge somewhere else, open up the floor where the where the breeze charge is, blow the fuse charge, and then they're going to run away from the fuse charge into that area where you're, you've already breached. And it's actually a nice way to get kills. Uh, plus, you can open castles and stuff. I'm not a big fan of fuse because you can get flanked a lot. You can get C4 very easily. It's just, it's just a high risk to actually get in. It's hard to actually get in there and actually use him efficiently without getting killed. Um, but... That's my loadout if you want to run them, you know? And again, you guys might know better based on the players you are playing. Maybe Fuse is like one of the best picks. And if that's the case, run that loadout. You know what I mean? Uh, and again, the secondary the secondary utility is one that you can switch around quite a bit with him. With Blitz, always the smoke grenades, never the breach charge. Literally never the breach charge. Literally never. Because he's got even less, he's got even less shield coverage, right? Compared to Monty, where it's like he could die a lot easier from the sides. So the smoke grenades, great for smoking something off, sprinting at another guy, chasing him down, flashing him, pounding him onto the floor, turning him onto his back, pulling his pan, I mean, uh, shooting him in the head, and then you get your kill, whatever. Um, laser sight, muzzle break, very straightforward. Blitz, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Commando is what I run on IQ with a flash hider. Um, does a lot of damage, low recoil great gun uh let's actually quickly check grim I, I i like whatever setup i have on grim and i might be different no it's the exact same okay so that's yeah that's the loadout um i would recommend for the commando is that flash hider and then you could run g36 um this isn't a bad option especially with that acog site now i might actually try this out as well because i haven't actually tried it out yet this season um most of the time i'm just running the commando but i'm gonna actually switch it right now and just try to see how it goes the aug if you like it, go ahead and run it. It's not a bad gun. I just think the other two are a bit better. I run suppressor on the pistol here. This is very important because IQ uh, can shoot things through floors. So you can break their utility without them hearing it. Um, you can also take out the cameras a little quieter. So it's just a nice little way to kind of be a little sneakier with IQ, especially since your pistol is what you have out while you have the gadget out. Gotcha. Um, and then grenades. I mean, if you're not running grenades, again, you're trolling. Are you running claymores on IQ? Stop that stop that yeah run the grenades i mean having the destruction is huge for iq I iq's obviously had a globe and i haven't treated her with enough respect so maybe we should actually play some iq soon and in order to convince me i'm gonna get a nice attachment skin and run the pox on lock charm which looks absolutely fantastic with the black eyes go subscribe on twitch do exclamation mark charm in the chat click the two links and you've got the pox charm baby then we got Buck, who I recently got the Black Ice for, which I was super hyped about because I have played this game for so long, and uh, this is one of the ones I wanted for so long, and I finally got it. So W's in the comments for that. Um, I got Flash Hider on here with Magnum 5B. Also, you know, this kind of makes me think, like, what what is your guys' favorite gun skin? Because, like, or sorry, favorite Black Ice. Like, what gun do you like Black Ice, or what gun do you want Black Ice on? Because this is one that I was, like, obsessed over. And I just casually, like, one day I just opened the pack, and I got it, and I was so hyped um gone six on buck is huge especially because his primary is doing so much already you got the shotgun on the primary you got the uh the gun with 30 bullets or whatever it is and then um this is a big one this is a big one between hard breach charge and stun grenades i would argue that if you're solo queue you always want to bring the stuns these allow for playmaking you got to make big plays when you're solo queue you got to be able to take the site, play aggressive, get the picks, find individual fights. And the flashbangs allow you to do that by blinding people in one area, pushing the other area, or getting some audio cue and playing a flashbang to fully blind them and get a free kill. A lot of good plays with fla with flashbangs. The hard breach charges are nice for adding pressure to different areas, but they don't really allow you to get that pushing capability. They're great in five stacks if you need to get like a couple hatches. You know, you don't have a Habana. Uh, or you only have like one set of hard breach charges, you want another one, you don't have a hard breacher at all, then yeah, great, fantastic, bring the hard breach tools. Um, but I would say most of the time, you, you you definitely want to run the flashes. I think the hard breach tools are a little overrated on Buck's loadout, and too many people are using them, because the flashbangs will get you out of a lot of situations that just, just happen in Siege, where there's a lot of times where it's like, man, we really need something else here. Uh, I run flash iron on this, I don't know if I, I said that already, but there you go. 
Blackbeard's loadout is interesting. I mean, Blackbeard's kind of booty, guys. He's kind of booty. The shields are weak. He's good in lower ranks because people can't aim. Or maybe even on console. I don't know. I don't know if that's the case. If you're playing a lot of high fire rate guns, probably don't pick them. But I run the Flash Hider on the Mark 17. The DMR is also pretty good. Um, I probably would put the Magnifying B. I don't like the telescope sights. I think they're too zoomed in. Uh, I'm not sure why I had that on. Maybe it just defaulted to it. This you could run the suppressor on. Honestly, I do like the suppressor on this gun. I'm going to put it on right now. Um, yeah, the SR-25 is pretty solid. does 61 damage. Pretty huge. Deagle with the laser sight. Not bad. And then grenades. Or flashbangs. The flashbangs are also good here. Uh, but again, the grenades destruction capability is very nice. You can also nade people out of positions, and then they have to run into the open, which is where your shield kind of comes in handy. Uh, so that's kind of a cool thing which is also part of the reason why I like the grenades. Capital's loadout. I run the para. The LMG, a lot of people run the LMG. If you run the para, no, re no recoil. Extended barrel is solid. Um, ACOG scope. I'm running ACOG on pretty much everything these days. When I can run an ACOG, I'm practically, I'm just running it. If I was running this gun, I'd probably put flash hider on. Yeah, probably just this loadout right here. I'm not a big fan of this because it does slow you down quite a bit. It is slow clunky that's my main complaints about capital is he's already slow and clunky with a crossbow a lot of risk in, in pulling it out because you can get shot straight in the face while you're doing it and people play a lot really aggressive in my lobbies at least so if they're not playing aggressive you if you find you're playing against a lot of passive people you don't play against aggression very often capital is probably a really good pick because you're not going to die with your crossbow out and you can make a lot of good plays with the fires and the smokes from that um i run claymores and harbreeze tools EMPs, yeah, it really just depends. This one's site dependent. If you're playing a repel, Claymore is great because uh, he does have that kit that allows you to do those site executes, so the Claymores are nice um, if you're doing that. Harbury Shoals adds versatility, opening hatches, opening walls. EMP grenades, great if you're working with somebody to try and achieve something. So this one you can kind of float around, and then you also have the Gone 6 for a little bit of destruction. So overall, a lot of utility. Most of the time, I find that you're not actually able to use it all. Um, whether that's just like your whole team's dead or you get shot in the face at some point throughout the round because of the fact that you're trying to use his utility, which is slow and clunky and risky, essentially. With Habana, a Supernova honestly kind of gas, kind of a gas shotgun. This thing's actually kind of underrated. I don't run the suppressor on this because it makes it so long. And with shotguns, you want to play close quarters. You want to be able to hide around corners and kind of like swing out on the people. The suppressor reveals your position before you actually see them. So it gives them a quicker reaction time on you. So I don't like the suppressor on the shotgun, but um, the shotgun itself is pretty nice. Most of the time I am running the um, Type 89, which uh, it's probably like, I probably run this 95% of the time. Like there's, it's very rare that I run the shotgun, but compensator on that uh, because there is a lot of side to side recoil. So this is another one where flash hider is typically not the move extended barrel and put the hollow b on the barrier nine and then flashbangs breeze charges uh it can work sometimes it can work sometimes pretty much all the time i'm using the flashbangs though kind of hammered that point into the ground jackal you can run c70 or pdw please don't run the shotgun unless you want to run both shotguns and just have a good time then uh that's insane but you could i run the flash hider on this uh and then on the pdw I don't run it very often. ACOG extended barrel. I think flash hider might be a bit better just because there is a little bit of recoil uh, and you don't need the extended barrel, I find. Smoke grenades, Don't please don't play Claymores on Jackal. Please don't, please don't. Get used to making plays with this secondary utility. Secondary utility will change your life. It will change your life. If you don't utilize secondary utility very well, start getting really good with it. It will make you so much better. On Ying, I run suppressor ACOG. Suppressor is really nice on the LMG. Um, I love it, so I use it. And I run suppressor, uh, suppressor, muzzle break, whatever. You can run whatever on the pistol. It doesn't matter. And then I run smokes again. Smokes and combos with the candelas. You have six pieces of throwable utility. Even if there's a Jaeger, you can burn the ADS. You can burn the Wamai. Throw all your shit. And like you, you just created an absolute beast of a push, especially with the smokes, to block off those longer angles where maybe they're not getting flashed. Uh, you can run the hard breach tools if you're a loser and you suck at the game. Don't have... I, it was, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. It was your friend, your friend, Jimmy Bob. Um, Zofia. Now you could run LMG with the compensator. It's okay. It's okay. I run the M76 too most of the time. I don't play a lot of Zofia. I run compensator on this as well. I don't know if that's the play. It might be flash hider. You can try them both out. See how it goes. Uh, laser sight. Obviously I've been running laser sight on all these. If you haven't noticed. And then claymores or breaches sight dependent, both strong. 
Um, just kind of plan out what you're going to do before the round starts and make a decision on what utility will actually help you out. Thinking about these things before the round starts will allow you to actually make the plays that you need when the round is happening. And remember, drone phase is not phone phase, as our wise friend Athena once said. Dokubi, I run angle grip? What the hell? Uh, I'm putting ver I'm putting horizontal grip. Give me the movement speed. Let me make some plays. It's funny how I didn't even realize half the stuff that I had on here. SMG 12 with the laser sight. Yeah, I didn't even have laser sight on it. Man, I'm trolling. Uh, you could run Gon 6, but you're giving up that close range aggression with that SMG 12, which is very nice to have. Um, so I, I'm, I typically am running the SMG 12, unless there's like something where it's like, oh, I really need to bring a Gon 6 for this. You know, you see something like I need a Gon 6. Let me, let me pull that shit up. Uh, smokes or stun grenades. Stun grenades I'm running pretty much all the time. So the stun grenades are really nice here because when you hear a roamer on the call, like let's say you're hunting down a roamer, which is what you should probably try to do with Doke anyway. Hunt down a roamer, you hear him around a corner, you flashbang him and you kill him. Boom. Now you've got the cameras, you've got the kill, you did it completely risk-free where he can't even fight back. You don't have to like raw dog dry peek him, which is one of the riskiest things you can do. Um but you could also bring smokes and player more passive player with the team. You could bring EMPs and player back by the breach, etc. cetera. Uh, but I find that her utility is best when you can pick off someone and hack the cameras because then you have so much info. Um, plus, it's a lot easier to fight those roamers with the Dokubi phone calls. And she's one of the most banned attackers right now. And that's why. It's because she is a roam clearing machine. Lion, I run the Vector with the Suppressor. Sounds super nice. Has a 50-round mag. It's, it's pretty good. A lot of people have been on the 417 grind lately with Lion as well. So, you know, try it out if you want. If you like DMRs, give her a go. I'd probably run Horizontal Grip Muzzle Break on this. Um, but for me, I'm going to stick to the Vector because I think this is a really fun gun. And I don't play Lion very often. So when I do, I want to use this gun. You know what I'm saying? You could run the Magnum or the P9. I'll probably pick the P9 here. And then Grenades online is really strong for breaking utility you, you could run the flashes but i like the grenades better with his ability because his ability is 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 making people not be able to move around when you add that with a grenade then it's like that now they have to run from the grenade and they're getting pinged and now i kind of have a bit of a wall hack situation i have more info it's it's kind of just suits his ability uh his ability nicely so i run the uh grenades on him think uh you could run the spear the spear is not terrible it's not great it sounds really good with the suppressor. If you want a gun, this is probably the best sounding gun in the game is the spear suppress. You could rock it, but the LMG is really strong right now. Flash hider on that. Um, and the black ice, of course, and the pox charm, of course. And then PMM. PMM, best pistol in the game. We're running the PMM. Grenades on Finca is uh, is good. All three of these are great. I mean, it just depends what, what your plan is, what site you're pushing. I run grenades most of the time on her. Um, but you could run flashes as well, especially because her ability will unblind you faster if you flash yourself so you could straight up flash yourself and an enemy at the same time like flash both of you somehow use your ability and the flash will clear off you he'll still be blind and then you can kill him so there, she's almost like a budget ying in that sense there's like hopping in the green window on canal doing that is kind of fun uh grenades are nice though for the destruction i'm, I'm most of the time running grenades on her maverick m4 if you're in the ar-15 you're a psychopath because this gun is literally so good you could run flash iron on this i have muzzle break on i like the muzzle break i i me personally i'm muzzle breaking it um but yeah if you don't like it then go ahead and switch flash bangs smoke grenades are not bad as well especially if you're running like a glass map strat where you you mav the wall and glass looks through the wall as it's opening, but it's already pre-smoke, so they can't see the wall opening on their side. Uh, then you can have four, uh, like four smoke grenades, which is nice, but flashes are good for playmaking. Uh, back to the M4 for a sec. The reason I run the muzzle break is because that initial first bullet is what is the biggest recoil contributing fac factor here, I find. Is it jumps off quick off the start <clears throat> and then kind of levels out a bit. So getting rid of that first initial bullet recoil helps me control it a lot better, I find. And the and yeah, that's that's basically it. I don't know how to explain that any more in depth. I run the ARX on uh, Nomad. You can run the AK. It's a fun gun and it's good. Uh, I wouldn't hate on you for running the AK, especially with the suppressor. Sounds really nice. Uh, ARX though, muzzle break. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, okay, that didn't happen. Muzzle break. Uh, Hollows or uh, ACOG site. Uh, I run the I run the pistol. I don't. I'm not running this fucking thing, dude. Nah, nah. I'm whiffing with this thing if I'm running it. And then flashbangs. You can also bring breach charges though. If you're if you're doing a strat where you take above the bomb site 
air jab off all the different flank routes, and then you breach charge the floor to create vertical pressure. It's like a self-sufficient um, vertical breacher, essentially, <clears throat> where you're not getting flanked, which is the biggest thing when you're trying to take vertically is getting flanked will completely screw you, right? And then they have vert control and the floor is open, so then they can stop you from planning and you have to retake it yet again. So that's a, that's a good way to lose. So Nomad's nice for that in that sense, but most of the time I'm just kind of like going with my team making plays with flashbangs, et cetera. Gridlock, I run the flash hider. I don't, I, I really don't like gridlock, um, but her gun is fun. You know, her gun is fun. Uh, and she has a shorty. So like, she's, she's fun. She's fun to play, but I just, I don't think she's good. I think she's overrated. Uh, you can run the LMG. A lot of people like the LMG as well. Same as Capitals. Uh, and then I had smoke grenades on. Smokes are nice if you're going direct push. I think that her strongest asset is doing like a direct sight push, smoking everything off, grid locking off, going for a plant, creates a lot of noise, a lot of chaos. Uh, so she's a great like fast plant operator or even just like execute operator if you're executing later in the round two, uh, which is why I would run the smoke grenades. But the grenades are probably more versatile more of the time. So if you are playing her consistently, most of the time you'll probably want the nades, but then the smokes are nice if you are on a site where you can actually hit it directly. On knock, which I literally never play, I will run the flash hider. This gun sucks. Um, they nerfed into oblivion. They made it so she's not silent anymore. And um, they made nades shit at the same time. So knock's like pretty much useless here. Um, but yeah, if you're going to run her, run this, I guess. I don't know. And that honestly makes me a little sad to think about. Please bring knock back. Bring her back. Bring her back. And I have a cool like mop on her head too, you know? Amaru, I actually do run the supernova sometimes i mean g36 the a or g8 sorry g8 with the acog is nice it is very nice so most of the time i'm running this unless i have a plan where i'm like i'm gonna zip in here it's gonna be all close close quarters and i'm gonna win all my fights with a shotgun but then again the shotgun is a little more inconsistent now because the laser sights don't tighten the spread which i am sad about they need to add another attachment that it will actually do that which would be great smg 11 muzzle break yet again muzzle break on that uh you could run the gone six here as well it really just depends what you're doing what your plan is same with the hard breach charges like there's some rush strats where you can fly into like cafe dining and hard breach the hatch and drop it right away uh most of the time i'm running the flashbangs for the playmaking and honestly this this loadout that i have with her is basically like the i'm gonna kill everyone and like my grappling hook is not gonna do much but it might get me in the building quick to like start killing them faster and maybe surprise them a bit that's kind of like what i'm going for with this loadout but you could play like a more aggressive like I'm going to rush and get into sight instantly with a shotgun in the gone six or whatever. And it just really depends what your plan is with her. So again, planning is really the most important aspect here. Callie, I think she is so bad, but she's got the pocket F2 suppressor reflex B could run flash hider on this. If you want to control the recoil a bit more. Uh, and then I run claymores. I mean, she's usually outside doing something stupid. Anyway, playing a stupid repel, doing some stupid things. Callie's a beta op. I don't like her. Goodbye. Yana, uh, you could run the ARX here, but I like the G36C a lot better. Uh, it has more ammo in one mag, so you have 30 bullets compared to 20, so you have to reload less. You can take out multiple people um, if you are in a situation where you're trying to get aggressive. I think she's really, really strong off of her clones because you can use the clones to gather info, use the flashbangs, and then open up plays to actually enter in off that info. Use the Gon 6 if you're dealing with like a castle, a shield, a bulletproof, whatever, and then you can use that G36 with multiple multiple more bullets so 30 bullets to get in there get a pick you don't have to reload right away maybe get two picks she's really like a streaking operator if you start the streak you're getting more if you don't you're shut down but the opportunity is there because of the clones i think she's the best solo queue operator in the game that's my opinion uh because you can be direct you can be aggressive and you can do it all with a low amount of risk because of the info that you provide with the clones and with the flashes being able to blind them. So top tier op for me, but maybe your play style um, changes that for you, you know? You know, I'm not saying that she's the best for everyone, but she's definitely the best for me. And I'm good at the game, I think. I'm like pretty good. I'm not trying to say I'm the best. I'm not trying to like stroke my ego, you know? But I'm just saying like the results are there, kind of. Um, AK-12. Best gun in the game, Ace. Can't go wrong with an ace pick. Cannot go wrong. Just because you can open up lots of lines of sight, you can make plays off the Selmas, making loud noise cover, and then pushing in. Claymore is good for if you're like playing a repel to open up an outer breach, whatever. Uh, can't go wrong with ace. Can't go wrong. Zero, I run extended barrel. Uh, I find the actual that actually the recoil is 
kind of good with these. Like, I don't think these actually help the recoil a lot more. I find the extended barrel recoil is actually like my preferred recoil, uh, which is the same as the suppressor recoil and the no recoil, I believe. I'm like 99% sure of that, but I could be wrong. Uh, ACOG scope, this gun does a ton of damage. It's very good. Some people would argue this is the best gun in the game. Uh, if that's the case, I say uh, you're wrong, AK-12. Um, what? Sorry, what? Hard breach tools or claymores. You can switch between the two. Depends what your plan is. Some people like the MP7, but I would say that's actually a bit of a blunder because this gun is kind of insane. Yeah, and that's all. Um, you can honestly run the pistol as well. I find I run out of ammo a lot of time with the primary weapon because it only does have 25 bullets. So this one is, it, you're not like going wrong by picking the pistol, but I like the gun six because because then you have a little bit more that you can do with this kit. Flores uh, AR-33. I run the muzzle brake on this. Okay, I think I mentioned that you might run the flash on Thatcher, but I run the muzzle brake. So this is this is what I use more often than Thatcher's AR. So that's, that's the loadout I would set that up with. Unfortunately, you have the shitty Russian pistol here. Uh, it's not the PMM, but that's fine. And I run flashbangs. Never run claymores on Flores. That is an insane blunder. Flashbangs are freebies, boys. Flashbangs are freebies. Osa, I run flash hider on. Uh, same as thermite and then the frag grenades on here you can run the emps this is one operator with the emps i'm like i'm okay with because she's going to a breach anyway most of the time she's putting her shield in front of it it's like we kind of need to use the emps to get this wall open you can get away with like not opening walls a lot more than you'd think uh, i think too many people rely on like oh if we don't open the wall we lose a round but that's not necessarily the case a lot of people make a lot of mistakes that you can exploit uh, and you don't necessarily need to get the breach plus the grenades are really nice it's nice for breaking stuff, you know? Nice for, like, being versatile, playmaking, etc. Let's see, uh, Therm. Yeah, I do run the Flash Iron on Thermite as well, so we have a consistency there. On Sense, who you should probably never play, I run Flash Hider. And again, Laser Sight, Vertical Grip, Magnify B, every op, as you probably noticed. Hard Breach Chargers aren't bad here. Grenades are better for playmaking. Um, sense Gadget, completely useless. Honestly, screws me over more than it helps me. I would just not use it. Uh, and then let's move on because I'm going to get pissed. Uh, <laughs> Grim, I run the flash hider on yet again. Bailiff with the laser sight. Claymore's on Grim mo most of the time because most of the time I'm doing like that direct sight push. Maybe like a direct try to go for a plant style. Uh, and the claymores are helpful for the repel, etc. You can run you can run EMPs and hard breach absolutely on this dude. It really just depends what your plan is for the round. Um, and if you find that you're not in a position where these are going to be useful, just bring... Well... well that applies to the claymore as well pick whatever is going to be the most useful for the round because these aren't going to consistently be useful every single round like grenades or flashbangs would or smoke grenades right none of them are playmaking utility they're all like setup and like pressuring utility teamwork utility but also like kind of like safety net utility but i don't know it doesn't matter i run the para on bravo with the extended barrel uh the super shorty definitely opening hatches making rotates making vertical pressure if you need to you know if you're in that situation um, and then smoke grenades, never the claim, never the claymores on Brava. That is insane. That is insane. Don't do that. Um, R4C on the Ram with the flash hider. You can run the LMG. I don't, I just don't. I, I mean, it's the R4C dude. Um, what's new secondary shotgun. Fantastic in combination with those Rams to, uh, breach the floor. You know, if you're out of Rams, you need to pressure one tiny little spot that they could be in very good opening hatches, etc. And then I run the flashes. You could run the smokes as well. Again, site dependent, depending on what you're doing. Use your brain. Moral of the story is you should probably use your brain to think about what your plan is in the prep phase so you can pick the right utility and pick the right loadout for what you want to do that round. And then I run the AK on uh, Deimos, obviously. I like the flash hider on here. I know I mentioned that the suppressor is nice on Nomad, but with this one, I find you you do need to be able to aim with the AK because your only other gun is this is this pistol. And you're in those aggressive positions a lot of the time where you probably want the AK. You know what? Let's just throw the suppressor on for fun. I'm going to do it. I think Deimos is super unrated, super strong. Vendetta is a machine, especially with the grenades. Bring the grenades on Deimos. Don't play the hard breach tool. Don't play him like a support. Play him as an entry. Play him as an aggressor. Make the plays. Isolate fights. Isolate roamers. Kill them. Grenade them out of corner so they have to run while you have wall hacks. You pre-fire. They're, they're dead. Like, this dude's insane. And the grenades complement his kit so, so well. So that's all the best loadouts on all the operators in R6. I hope you learned something. I know you guys have been asking for this, so there you go. There you have it. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.